What is up, DJ Army? Another word awesome is John, and welcome to the strategy series for the Pershing. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this video to come out. Um, Pershing is a pretty good tank. I liked it a little bit better than the T20, although it does have uh, some of the stuff for some of the problems of the T20. Like the gun, well, the gun's actually decent, um, but it doesn't have the acceleration I'd like it to have. It actually has a little bit less than the T20. Um, but still, overall, it's a fun little tank, and I do recommend getting it. The way I play this tank is a lot of times I'll hang back when the ma uh, match first starts and wait to see where all the allies go and where the enemies pop up and just kind of look for opportunities to flank with this tank. Uh, since you don't have the acceleration you do on like maybe a Russian medium at the higher tiers, you can't just fly around the map um, getting out of, you know, egressing out of bad situations whenever you want. It's, a, it's really hard to turn around and get out of a bad situation in this tank. So. Uh, you really need to watch the map and watch where enemies and allies are and stuff and really watch for those opportunities to flank. So that's pretty much how you're going to play this tank. Um, so let's get right into some stats. 440 hit points. I mean, they're all pretty much the same, so there's really not no point in talking about that. Since guns do like two to 300 damage at this level, 50 hit points is not going to really matter. 704 an engine horsepower pushing 44 tons, 43 and a half tons about, and that's really where the problem in, with, comes in with this tank is the acceleration. I always felt, I always feel like I want a little bit more out of this tank, and I'm not getting it. And it's because the engine really just needs to be a little bit bigger, but really that's pretty high tonnage for a medium tank. 43 tons is pretty big. Um, for traverse, you got, or I'm sorry, speed limit 48, pretty decent. You're going to get up to that quite often, actually. Um, you know, because the engine will get you there. It's just it's hard to get started uh, 38 traverse on the tracks and 38 on the turret mean you have 76 degrees uh, turret rotation which is pretty decent I never really wanted any I mean obvious you always want more but I never felt like it wasn't enough um, the armor is pretty bad just like any medium 101 on the hull uh, 76 on the side and 50 in the back it's pretty bad same thing for the turret 127 isn't really horrible in the front but, but there's really not a lot of space for it usually you're gonna be getting shot in the hull uh, and then 76 on the side and 63 in the back. Again, not very good. Pretty much at two, tier 8 uh, mediums, you're going to get shot by everybody is pretty much how that works. So let's look at the uh, view range. 400, really, really nice, uh, which is pretty much standard for tier 8s. Uh, that three, 390 or so or 400 view range, pretty nice. Uh, Pretty standard is what I'm saying here, but it's really nice. 745 meter uh, radio is pretty standard. Let's talk about the... Uh, uh, modules here. Now, you will not start off with this radio. You don't get it with the T20. Um, I got it from the T29 and higher medium, or I mean, sorry, heavy line, but you, if you don't have the heavy line, you're going to start out with this uh, 508 with only under 400 meter radio. Pretty bad radio. It's going to be hard to radio past like halfway across the map. Um, everybody else should have pretty big radio, so that should help, but you really need to be able to radio back your position and posi positions of the enemies to help you with XP and credits and stuff and just to help your team in general. Uh, tracks, actually you don't get a lot out of the tracks, you just get the two degrees per second uh, traverse and you don't need the tracks to get the gun, you only need it for the turret, so they're really not all that useful. Um, almost like a Russian tracks where you just get them last because you can already get the turret and the gun. But in, in this tank specifically you can get the gun, which is not is pretty unusual for, for non-Russian uh, tanks. So there's tracks. Uh, engine, again, like I talked about, huge bonus to getting this four, 704 horsepower engine. You start off with this 560, and it's dreadful. It's very, very slow. It's about 12, you know, uh, 12 to 1 power to weight ratio. It's pretty bad. Um, so that bigger engine is going to help a lot. Turret, you get a large, pretty big increase on this turret. Uh, 26 millimeters of armor and you get two degrees per second and another 10 meters view range. That's a pretty nice upgrade for a turret. Also, obviously, the, uh, the some hit points. Um, and the problem is uh, 20, 127 armor on the turret is really not, it's nothing. Uh, you're probably, you're going to get hit every time you get shot. So armor on this thing is pointless. Don't even look at it. Um, but it is pretty nice to get that turret upgrade, to get those a couple of bonuses like that. The real big deal, though, is... If you unlock the entire T20, you should have this 90 mil M3 when you start, which is not a bad gun to start off with. Um, 160 pens a little hard to deal with, especially if you can't flank someone. If you can flank someone, you still will have somewhat of a hard time. You still need to pick out weak spots like above the tracks right here in the middle. You know, um, well, I mean, you have to do that anyway. Um, 
uh, go for like the softer spots of the turret and stuff like that just to make sure that you can pen even though you're you know shooting from the side or behind uh, you will do not need the tracks to get the 180, 180 pen upgrade so that's pretty nice same damage though and same reload rate so there's not a lot else except the pen uh, from the upgrade here but still a very nice upgrade um, let's talk about some weak spots really on a medium there's not a real reason to talk about these but obviously lower plate uh, commander cupola is obvious machine guns pretty obvious on most tanks um, sides and back anywhere really uh, the amorax underneath the turret as almost every other american is so you can shoot through the turret right there like right here on, on the tracks and stuff and possibly hit their um, ammo uh, also uh, this little flat spot right here is a soft spot because it's flatter doesn't have as much angle uh, and you can also have a chance to hit the ammo by shooting through there um, that's pretty much the weak spots of this tank so let's talk about some research so this is the research on the Pershing tree and um, contrary to what I usually do uh, I would go straight for that engine because you need to get your mobility up as soon as you can and 560 engine horsepower is not gonna cut it once you bump it up to 704 it's gonna make a huge difference with this tank the difference between the 160 gun and the 180 gun is not big enough to necessitate or to not go get this engine first so I get the engine first then I get the gun then I'll get the tracks because you can't get the tracks before the turret. You get the turret and last get the radio, fill everything else out, and then go for the pattern. Alright, we're back for some research and there's not really much need to talk about equipment since it's a pretty standard setup. If you watched any of my other videos, vent, rammer, and vert stab is what I put on almost every tank. Uh, plus 5% to all crew skills, plus 10% reload rate, and plus 20% accuracy when you move the turret or during your movement is going to help a lot especially for medium since you're flanking you're going to be shooting on move quite a lot and you need that tighter reticle um, for HE the rest AP is pretty standard layout for me unless I have like over a 240 pen gun 5 over 240 I usually get like 2 HE and the rest AP um, and then a standard set of consumables here all tier 7 and above so I get put a standard set of consumables as well as full rack of ammo or uh, full rack of equipment um, Crew is also pretty standard for me. I always get Mentor on my commander to give everybody else 10% bonus to uh, crew XP. And then once you elite the tank, which I won't be doing with this tank, but you know when you get into tier 10s, um, the commander, since he has the lowest amount of XP, always ends up with a bonus to XP. Uh, unless you're grinding out XP you want to convert, uh, which I don't do, then all your crew basically gets a, uh, a bonus at that point. Um, so... The rest of the crew, I always get repair because, you, especially with mediums, you want to get out of those situations where you're in a bad spot and you're trying to repair your track as fast as you can and you say you've used your uh, repair kit on something else and you're just sitting there like a sitting duck and the extra couple seconds off your repair time is going to help immensely. Uh, once these guys are all at 100% in their first one, I'm going to swap these set, this set of skills here into the second secondary and put the first secondary as brothers in arms. I think it's best for the whole tank to get brothers in arms it helps out the tank a lot more than just uh, a little bit here a little bit there kind of a thing uh, but that's pretty standard for me now now third set of uh, skills I would probably put the commander's mentor as the third and swap the second uh, secondary out with um, what's that called <laughs> I can't even remember now six cents because I think it's a really great skill to have on your commander, especially as a flanking medium, uh, trying to kind of put in, pushing up on the front lines, spotting enemies and stuff. Having that sixth sense to know when you've been spotted is really nice. Uh, it is, does have a little bit of delay though, so it's not going to save your ass every time, but it will help. Um, gunner, I always get snapshot. Just helps out my vert stab. It's like a second vert stab. It's not as powerful because it doesn't work in all situations, uh, but it's another negative 7.5% uh, to reticle bloom when you're turning your turret. So that's pretty nice. Um, driver, I get clutch braking. Even though your traverse is pretty awesome already, another 5% is just going to help you out, especially since I think the, weak, the the thing this thing needs more of at all times is mobility, so that it's going to help a lot. Radio operator, I'd get the one, uh, what's it called? Situational awareness, that'll get you another 3% view range, uh, just because the, the other radio uh, skills are not very good, I don't think. Uh, boost, boost to radio, you, you know, at tier 8 and above, you don't need that anyway. Everybody's got awesome radios. Uh, for loader, I'd probably get, a lot of people don't agree with this, but I would probably get um, safe stowage because plus 12.5% to ammo, uh, ammo rack hit points helps all the time. Um, and that means not only will you get uh, ammo rack to, 
less frequently, but also your ammo rack won't get taken out as frequently because as it has some more hit points. Uh, so that'll help a little bit. But it's much better, I think, than Adrenaline Rush because very rarely am I under 10% hit points. You know, I'm not usually sitting at 100 or 50 hit points. Very, very rare. So I just don't see it as being helpful. So those are the crew skills. Let's get this thing into some games and see what it can do. Here's a pretty good game I had on port. Uh, actually, this is like a two or three week old game. I can't even remember. Uh, but it's still a pretty good game. Um, so I'm sitting here waiting for everybody to move out because, like I said, especially as a flanker, it's nice to see where people go and wait for them to light up some enemies. The maps are so small that it's not like like if you were an AMX 40 or some kind of really, really slow TD, you'd have to move out right when uh, right when it was time, you know, the game started because you won't get to the action. Um, when you're in these faster medium tanks and stuff, you you can just wait. I've gone whole half a match almost before moving out because, you know, people are just camping and there's no opportunities for me to flank. Just sit there, hide behind a building and just wait because go get a beer, you know, because you're just going to be sitting there waiting and waiting for that opportunity because these maps, to be honest, are too small. They really need to increase the size of the maps for, for tanks that flank and stuff. So... Looks like I'm going to be going up the center here. I do that a lot on this map. Even from the north down, I go in the center a lot because I can get good flank shots on both sides of the uh, fence here. Mainly, uh, I like to go, if you're looking at the mini map here, I like to get at the 7 line here and try to flank it. Uh, if I'm north or south, I try to flank the 7 line. It's pretty easy to do as long as nobody else is going center, which I don't think they're doing in this game, but I have to, we'll have to check here in a sec. So I'm going to creep up and try to get some spots here, but not too... Uh, in this tank, I gen generally don't commit myself until I know pretty much for sure that I can that there's nobody there. Um, it's still always a risk when you push out and you're the first one up there uh, spotting people, but generally you can pop out a little bit, see if you can spot anybody, and if you wait a few seconds and stuff, you can see that nobody's there. IS-6 seems to have some real good spaced armor or something because I never seen a pennant right there. I think it's got spaced armor on the sides above the tracks. It eats a lot of my shells right there on the sides. Plus with 180 pen, you know, it's a lot harder to get those hits. And boom! Nice shot on the Pershing there on the side. Um, not a lot of damage, just kind of taking them out. But you can see I'm putting pressure on these guys from the front and, you know, from the side so that the guys uh, on the 7 line there can push up, hopefully. That's the whole point to flank, is kind of to leapfrog. Hopefully they'll push up. And then once they're engaging the enemy, and the enemy takes his guns off you, you can move up. And you can start moving in for the flank kill. So, I'm going to try to move in over here a little bit more. And it's I'm going to be do a little bit ballsy move here. Because there's a lot of tanks over here. But I'm trying to put more pressure to get those guys to move up. This T-34 is almost dead. So I'm at full life. I'm going to try to get this take this guy out. Losing a big tier 8 heavy like this in a tier 8 game does hurt. Again, exposing myself a little bit, but boom, I take him out. Get a lucky bounce, probably off that KV-13, I think. Or is it uh, T-43? There's some kind of lower tier uh, tank up there. IS-6 is now also low. Another nice bounce. I don't know how I'm getting these bounces. That could have been from the IS-6 because their gun is pretty bad. Uh, but angled 101, uh, 101 armor is still not very good. KV-13... Technically, it could have been him as well. Oh, now I'm really getting sandwiched. Oh, God. Trying to get high, trying to hide here. And no dice. Oh, great. And here's an IS or a 1S with a big shot to my face. Now I'm thinking, okay, I got to get out of here. I'm one shot from death. Okay, I used my track repair. Now, look, I'm still not below the 10% marker for Journal and Rush. Even though I'm one shot from death almost from any tank. I do not have the upgraded turret in this gun, in fact, or in this uh, game, in fact, I didn't have the upgraded turret for either games. Now, you can see the one line just got crushed, and two of the guys ran away from that fight. So even though they took more tanks with them, you could, doesn't mean they're going to win, even though they should. They should be crushing those guys. A lot of that's because they balled up in one spot and let the enemy flank them and stuff and get better position. Um, you don't have to hug someone's face to go to, to work with them. I was working with these guys, and I was two squares away from them, so, you know, you can still work with people and not be right in their face. In fact, 
the closer you are to people, the worse it is for you. Because you have the same opportunity to shoot as he does. And now the guy, you know, I, it's just not a good idea. Also, Artie has a, can, will try to splash you both and get a ton of damage on two different tanks at the same time because you guys are sitting close together and they have quite a large splash radius, especially at the higher tiers. Now, these guys don't have a big splash radius, just a gr couple girls in the west, I guess. But you still need to take into consideration. So here's a 110. That's a tier 8 Chinese heavy tank. Pretty nice little tank. Um, but I'm almost dead. I get lucky and just get in the track. Now, here's where it's nice to have that fast repair to get the heck out of there. Because that guy could have... Well, somebody, if they were in position, could have just popped out and killed me because I was tracked. Couldn't get away. Now I'm just kind of waiting for people to move in and try to flank these guys. But I think we're getting going to get flanked from the F line there. Uh, with the IS-6s, anyway. Everybody's pretty hurt on our team. And looks like we got one guy going for cap. I don't think he's going to make it, though. Nope, there's another guy going back to, to... So, try to shoot that 110 on the lower plate right there like I just did. Didn't get a good hit on him. And some of that's the 180 um, pen. Just not high enough to be shooting guys in the front. Even in, even in the when you're trying to shoot them in those soft spots. Because you, your shell isn't going to always hit exactly where you're aiming at. Try to get a shot on the T-59, no dice, I get taken out. Let's get another game. I don't have any plates for this one, so let's just get another one. Here's a really good game I just had on Serene Coast. It's fresh off the press, uh, and that's because I haven't been playing tanks for a while, and I'm trying to get back into it, and I just haven't been playing a lot. Um, so this is one of the only maps that right away, especially if I'm spawning on the north, uh, I go I go for this I just leave the, the uh, flag area immediately because I'm trying to get to this one spot that a lot of people like I in my opinion it's the best spot on the whole map because especially as one of these uh, as a flanking medium I'm trying to get to the a, a sniper position in this map to wait until there's an opportunity to flank this is a very narrow map so that's why uh, taking up a snipe position is not a bad idea so this to me in my opinion is the best spot on the north side of the map Plenty of targets to shoot at usually. Oh, there we go. Oh, damn Rocky Troll. Would have been a nice shot on the Panther right there. Panther 2. Nope. That's a Cupola shot. I'm not going to take it from 417 meters. That's not going to happen. And you don't want to shoot a lot when you're behind bushes like this, especially slightly exposed like I am, because it's just going to expose your position. Unless you know you have a good shot. It, it's seem, It's kind of pointless to take it from this spot. So it looks like they're already pushed down the hill. Pretty ballsy move right there. Well, it seems to happen quite a bit. It used to be on the north that you could push all the way up to the to D1 on the lower part of the hill. Catching P Panther M10, hanging out way out in the open. The gun on that thing, not very good. It's a gold tank. I would don't recommend buying it. It's kind of fun just because they try to paint it up as an American tank, but other than that, not very good. Um... So that Panther is getting his butt kicked over there. I don't know who's hitting him, but it's getting hit hard. It might be the Super Pershing, I guess. Oh, it's probably the guys over there at E9 on the on the uh, island. I'm going to have to try that sometime. Looks to be a pretty good spot. I see a lot of people going to that spot quite often. So the Panther 2 doing pretty good still. Oh, here's an uh, PZ4. I was trying to shoot this guy, but again, I'm pretty rusty still at this game. I haven't played much lately, and boom, shoot right over his face. I should have led him a little more and shot a little bit lower. So again, see, you can see I'm just trying to snipe anybody I can and wait for an opportunity to, to uh, go flank somebody. And you, it's really tough in this map because it's very narrow, so take your time. Don't just rush out there because you're bored. Um... There's just not a lot of pl places to go on this map. So, okay, Panther M10 just about to get taken out. He's almost dead. PZ4 working pretty far back. There, now the uh, Pan Panther M10's dead. Now it's just those two guys at C1 that I'm worried about, really, as far as flanking people. And the Yag 8.8 .8 is pretty bad right over there. Or is it Yag Panther is the only one I can see. They don't have a Yag 88, do they? Or Yog. 
yog88. So now I'm, I'm taking a calculated risk here. Right here I'm most exposed, but I'm taking a risk to get over to this rock right here and so I can get behind these guys. And it pays off. Didn't even get hit. Now there's no way they can back out of this position without getting pretty hurt by me. I can at least take out the T20 right there. The Pershing on the other hand, maybe not, but I mean he's not he's only at half health, so I probably could. Well he's a little bit more than half. So now I'm just kind of waiting. This is a great position to be in. Nice move on my part, moving up a little bit, trying to spot the type. Remember, a lot of what you're going to be doing in this tank, especially on narrower maps, is spotting. You're going to have to hot hug those rocks, man. There's the type. I don't know if I got the spot or the super did, but... So T20 gets taken out by Artie. Now I'm thinking, okay, I can take out a, a half-dead or more than half-dead Pershing, and I know that type's not going to help because he's way behind the uh, hill there. Hoping nobody shoots me in the butt right there. Nobody does. Cool. I should easily be able to take the scout. Hit him in the track. Very unfortunate. He must be shooting HE for some reason. And boom! Nice shot on him. Making sure he doesn't drive back up the hill. I definitely want to get my front armor out here instead of having my butt armor toward the enemy. Now I'm getting hit pretty bad. Yog Panther taking a shot at me, I think. Yog Panther. Now we got the hill. Nice. So it was a good little push there. Taking that hill. Now this KV-13, he's a pretty good driver. Just watch what he does. This is exactly the kind of driving that can really ruin the other the uh, enemy team. And something I don't expect anymore. This is really driving that I don't get a lot in my standard battles. Now we're a little too close right here. I decided to go off a little bit this direction. Maybe shoot down on some of these guys. There's the type. Didn't help his buddy out at all sat there. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, he's probably waiting too, but he could have saved that Pershing and T20 just by popping out, putting a couple shots in me, you know? So the KV-13 decides to go for it. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going for it too. When you see a guy go for it, do it. We could easily take this guy out. We have um, a lot more hit points than him combined. He's trying to take the 13 out. Should probably be shooting at me since I'm almost dead. I have less hit points. And he decides, no, nah, I'm going to keep shooting the, the KV-13. I think I rammed him right there for like 150. So I'm just trying to kill this guy before the 13 dies. Come on, baby. Now I'm going to take my time. Boom. You're dead. So we kill that guy. And uh, he almost took out the 13. In fact, he could have won that if he would have taken me out first. I was like two shots from death. He should have... Always look around. Don't just tunnel vision in on one guy. So we're coming up to the artillery, and I decide not to go that direction because many times on this map, I've gotten over there to try to take out the arty, and I got shot in the face and died. So that's no good to anybody driving straight up into the arty. I was kind of thinking I could get behind that tiger too and help him out, but no such luck. 3601 takes out the priest. Nice. SU-5 gets the KV-13, just like I said. Could happen there. It really sucks that uh, you can get hit, you can uh, drive right in the face of these guys. So, 13F3 takes out the SU-5, and now there's only the Tiger II and the Grill left. Now, I'm kind of thinking at this point, I'm gonna try to take the RD out if I can see him. There he is. I actually thought the priest was still in it right now, just over his head. Um, now I'm thinking, well, I'm still thinking that, actually, I thought the priest was about where the flag is right now, so I'm going to try to pop out in a, a direction he's not expecting, and I don't see him. Get a quick shot on the grill, which I know well, no, won't hit, but you never know. Now I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go behind that tiger, too, and help him out, help uh, the IS-6 out, because IS-6 is pretty hurt. Okay, now the tiger, too, just got jacked up pretty good, so... Not a lot of a threat anymore. Okay, now there's definitely no threat. Two hit points left. This is pretty much in the bag now. If he had 500 hit points still, he could easily take out two or three guys or maybe win it all. I mean, it has happened. So, it's definitely GG now that the Tiger's dead. And I'm just going to kind of fast forward it right here because it's getting kind of long and boring. I'm going to just go back and try to kill the grill because why not? I thought he would have been dead already, actually, but he wasn't. 36-1 didn't get him. So that's pretty much the game. Let's get some plates. 
So here's the first play to that game. 1,041 point game. No two times, just a regular game. Pretty nice. Only killed one guy, but damaged three guys. Lots of shots on guys here. But the big thing to know about that game is waiting until you have an opportunity to flank. Uh, you know, not you just taking your time and stuff is really what I'm going to show you with that game. So second play, uh, third third for XP, pretty nice, even though it's really because I didn't do a lot of damage, even though I was helping my team a lot in spotting and helping that KV-13 out a lot. Final play here, 1,840 hit points of damage on a 13, well, it's really a 1,450 hit point tank uh, with the upgraded turret. Pretty nice game, not the greatest, but pretty nice. Um, only 11 hits out of 16 shots fired. Not very good. I did a lot, miss a lot. Uh, shooting at PZ4 and the Panther did not help. Nine penetrations. Uh, pretty nice little game though. Still got 20,000 credits. Pretty nice. So that's uh, the Pershing. What do you guys think about it?